Amen. Thank you for receiving us this morning. Be blessed in the presence of the Lord. Who's happy to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Amen. He woke us up to see and experience another day. And I'm grateful to be here this morning. Thank you so much for receiving us. Thank you to... Mm, I've got to get it together because I'm so used to saying mom and dad Ripley. Um, to Pastor Joseph and Marjanita Ripley <laughs> and the body of Christ, thank you for receiving us here this morning. We are blessed. We don't take this opportunity for granted. We know it is God ordained. Amen. And so happy Memorial Day weekend to you. And also on the Christian calendar, it's Pentecost Sunday. Amen. So yes, we celebrate and we commemorate the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. And if it had not been for the Holy Spirit, I believe I would not be here today. Amen. And so um, in the Word of God, I believe that it is God-ordained, and thank you for also welcoming our spiritual home, Victory Kingdom Church, as they are following us on this assignment. Amen. We do believe we are here by assignment, not because we wanted to be on a holiday, because this was everything but the vacation. Amen. Everything but a vacation. And um, I had to remind my family, when every, my mom would say, Daphne, enjoy your holiday. Mom, it's an assignment. Amen. Amen. Because the word of the Lord instructs us in Ephesians 2 verse 10. He says, we are his workmanship. Amen. Created in Christ for good works. That he has prepared, he has set it out in advance for us to do. Amen. So I am just walking in what Christ has prepared in advance for me to do. And I believe the word of God, I believe this with all my heart, that wherever I go, it will be well with me as long as I am in sync with what the Holy Spirit and God has set out for me to do. When I walk in the good works that he has set out for me, it will be well with me. But you see, things don't go well when we are out of sync in the good works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. So brothers and sisters, I pray on this Pentecost Sunday that we will come into alignment and into agreement what, what the Holy Spirit has prepared for us in advance. Amen. And I thank God that he has allowed us to stop by the body of Christ one more time. Amen. We do not take this for granted. We do not take this. We want it, you know, we know that God has prepared these good works and it's an assignment. And we know also that the enemy has plans to derail you and to keep you out of sync in what God has prepared in advance for us to do. So we are grateful to be here one more time. We are honored to be here one more time. Thank you for another moment together in the presence of God. So this is my second service for the morning, Dad. Second one. I was already at Victory Kingdom Church online this morning. Amen. Um, Cape Town is six hours ahead in your summer. And seven hours in your winter, am I right? So we are six hours ahead. So this morning when I woke up, I went into service. And um, I was blessed to be ministered to by one of my favorite speakers. <laughs> one of my favorite speakers. I'm not looking for trouble, baby. No, Just I'm one good. of my favorite speakers. Um, our youngest son, Lamont. Lamont and Monty is the same person. Right, Lamont is our youngest son. Um, he ministered this morning. It was Youth Sunday, and I was so blessed. You know how a mama's heart, when you hear it from your own, and we give God praise. Our eldest son is Mornay, half Mister. He's the eldest. I know it's confusing, Monty and Mornay, but God has blessed us, and thank you. And since the last time we were here, we also we were blessed. We have a grandson. I think you you know all about Hunter. Um, but since we were here last, I think River was born in 2019. Yeah, so we were last year in July of 2019, and then God blessed us with the most adorable creature on earth, 
And her name is River Victoria Hofmeister. And Heather, I've never had a sister. I never had a sister. Yes. I never had a daughter. And now we have a granddaughter. <laughs> and we give God praise. They are a blessing to us. And we are honored to be grand. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, I thank you this morning for receiving us. And just for, I pray that you will open up your heart this morning. I know what the Holy Spirit and Abba Father is going to release unto you through his servant, Apostle Oscar. You're going to be mightily blessed. But you will only be blessed to the measure that you open up your spirit. Amen. So I pray this morning that that is that you will open up your spirit and receive all that God has in store for you. And then you walk into the good works. Amen. That he has prepared in advance. God bless you. Receive the servant of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Come on. Can you clap to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? Come on. Can you clap for Jesus? He's worthy of praise, worthy of honor, worthy of glory. The lifter of our head, the lover of our soul. The one who is able to do abundantly, exceedingly more than what we could do or ask. The one who is our king. The one who is our lover. The one who is our restorer. And if God has been good to you, you ought to say something. If God has honored you, you ought to say something. If God has made a way for you, you ought to say thank you, Jesus. God has opened a door for you and to praise him. Come on, if God has moved the mountain, if God has healed you, God has touched you, if God has blessed you, there ought to be something that comes from your spirit. And say, God, I thank you that when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, the goodness of God upon our lives today, we celebrate this new day. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Dr. Ripley, is it okay if I move this pulpit over here? I just want to impart this morning. Amen. You know how much sometimes you come into a place and into a setting and you've got the prepared message all worked out, but then God says, just, just impart this morning into the lives of the people. That's right. That's, you can put it on that side. It's okay. Praise God. Um, we wanna, first of all, we want to give thanks to the Lord for your great uh, pastors, your leaders, Dr. Joseph and Dr. Marginita Ripley. Come on, can we celebrate them? Come on, can we clap for them? Can we thank God for them? Can we honor Dr. April Ripley and Heather Ripley and Joseph in his absence? Can we celebrate the Ripley family? Come on, can we thank God? Can we thank God for the gifts in the body of Christ? You all don't know who you have in your midst. Yeah, when, when, whenever we mention the Ripley's name, doors open for us. Isn't it amazing that the power of a name can open up so many doors that wherever we go, uh, in the USA, um, when we mention the Ripley's name, they say, oh, we love that family. We know that family. They, uh, up till yesterday, up till yesterday, um, and, and uh, we thank you. There's one thing about uh, the Ripley family. They are celebrators of people. Yeah. They celebrate people, and we want to honor you today. We want to thank you today for your love, for your kindness, for your generosity. And we know that as you keep on walking, God will keep on working. And we thank you. This is family. Amen. We are at home. And we feel welcome this morning. And I did say it before, and I'll say it again, that there are really two places in life you cannot miss. The one is heaven, and the other one is Cape Town. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Somebody asked me the other day, he said, Apostle, a friend of mine here in the USA, Apostle, mention two places for me. Uh, mention two places that you'd love to, 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 to live at. I said to you, man, I only have two places. My number one is Cape Town, and my number two is number one, <laughs> Cape Town. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What an honor it is for us today uh, to enjoy the goodness and the glory and the power of God. Amen. Uh, I know we've been here in 2019 last, and since then we've been through COVID. We've been through so much, uh, experienced a lot of challenges in Cape Town, and, and we've experienced so much with COVID. So many people lost their lives. And, and, um, but we come today and we say, Lord, thank you that you have kept us, that you have covered us, that you have been good to us. It could have been so, so different. Uh, but we called, the Lord brought us right through COVID. And we are here today only by the grace of God. 
I don't know how many of you understand the power of God's grace. That's what David could say is that I'm confident, I'm still confident. In the book of Psalm chapter 27 verse 13, David says, And I am still confident of this very thing, that I will experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, David is confident about the goodness of God. David is confident about the greatness of God. David is confident about the generosity of God. And David is confident conscious about the glory of God that David would says man I've been through so much stuff but I'm still confident I've been through pain but I'm still confident I've been through disappointment but I'm still confident life has been hard and life has been tough but I'm still anybody still confident this morning Everybody so confident that you've been through so much stuff in your life, some disappointment, some drama, some difficult, but you can declare with David that I am still confident that I will see and experience the goodness of God in the land. Ah, oh, God, talk to me. In the land of the loving. I want to declare body of Christ, uh, the goodness of the Lord uh, follows you. The goodness of the Lord protects us. The goodness of the Lord. And David says, he says, hey, I, I, I've been through so much stuff, but I wanted to understand that my stuff and what I've been through have not robbed me from being confident in God. Because I know he who began a good thing is me, is faithful to complete it. I know that my Redeemer loves. Uh, and so this morning, David finds him confidence. Uh, he says, he says, I woke up with that scripture this morning. And David reminds us that it doesn't matter where you, whatever you go to, uh, you might lose your friends, you might lose your family, you might lose your health, you might lose everything, but never lose your confidence in God. Uh, because confidence in God will cause you to get back everything that the devil have stolen from you. Confidence in God let you know that the goodness of the Lord surrounds you. The goodness of the Lord is running after you. And the only reason why you are seated here today was because the goodness of the Lord. Say with me, I'm confident. I'm confident. Because of the goodness of the Lord. Say, I'm confident. I'm confident. Because of the grace of the Lord. Come on, say His grace is sufficient for me. His grace is great over my life. Therefore, I am confident. Say, I am confident not only in the goodness, not only in the greatness, not only in the grace of God, but I am confident in the generosity of God. God is a generous God. He woke you up this morning allow you to see a new day. He allow you to experience good new mercies. He allow you to experience great favor that you never woke yourself up this morning. The generosity of God says that I'm a generous God. I'll bless you with a new day. My mercies are new every morning. And this is the day that the Lord has... That's right, that's right. Go ahead, clap to the Lord. God is in this place today. God is a good God. I'm not about to lose my confidence in God. I'm not about to lose my confidence in God. Because God is my strength. Amen. How many of you know this morning that life is a collection? Life is a collection of miracles. Life is a collection of mistakes. Life is a collection of moments. But life is also a collection of memories. And today we want to say happy Memorial Day. And in the body of Christ, we have to function with the understanding, the power of memories. Because memories allow you to, number one, to have look in hindsight. Hind, say with me, hindsight. hindsight. Hindsight lets you know where God has brought you from. Yeah. Hindsight lets you know what you've been to could have been so different. Yeah. 
Yeah. Hindsight let you know that what you and I experienced was only the hand of God. And whenever I come into the presence of God, I look at life with hindsight to know that I never made it by myself, that I never carried myself, never provided for myself, never, it was only the hand of God. And I, I look in hindsight that what could have happened never happened. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And what was supposed to happen never happened. And, and what the devil had on the agenda for my life did not succeed. And, and what the devil planned for my children did not come to pass. Uh, and when I look in hindsight, I recognize uh, the power of God over my life. And I say, God, I thank you for the stuff that could have happened that never happened. The things that were supposed to happen did not happen. Therefore, when I praise God, I don't only praise God for the stuff that I can see. I praise God for the stuff that is in the unseen. Because the unseen realm is much bigger than the seen realm. Amen. And so I want to welcome you this morning, those who are watching via live, also our own congregation. This is a great day. It's a new day of the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. And so when I look at life, I look at life with hindsight. But the hindsight also gives me now insight. That while I'm in my present, while I'm in my current reality, I have greater insight to know that God is able. I have insight to know that God will never leave me more forsake me. I have insight to know that God is on the throne. I have insight to know that His ability is never in question. What will always be in question is my inability to believe God's ability. God is looking for people who have insight to know that your greater days are still ahead of you. God is He's looking for people to know uh, and to understand that you have to anticipate greater things. Uh, by the way, if you ask me what am I going to talk about this morning and pour into you, I want to say to body of Christ, anticipate greater things. Uh, Dr. Ripley, anticipate greater things. Uh, and insight, let me know if God has done it, then God will surely do it again. Uh, insight, let me know that God has a track record that cannot fail. Uh, insight, let me know that God is a a winner and because God is a winner I am an overcomer I have inside while I'm in my situation are you hearing me family do, do you feel what I feel this morning do you feel that I feel I'm wanting? I feel that God is advancing us. I, I feel that God is taking us to a place uh, where you've never been before. I feel that God is going to take you and myself to a level beyond our comprehension because we have insight. I have insight to know that He never changes. I have insight to know that God cannot lie. Whatever word has been spoken, whatever promise has been made, it shall come to pass. Say with me hindsight. hindsight. Say with me insight. insight. Say with me, but this is what's coming now is exciting. <laughs> Say, I have foresight. <laughs> come on, I have foresight. <laughs> come on, I have foresight. <laughs> I have faith to believe the God of the impossible. I have faith to believe uh, that God is working it out. I have faith to believe that my God is able. I have faith to believe that I have foresight. Foresight, foresight, foresight. You're living in a time where people are overwhelmed with so many things. Overwhelmed, overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Uh, in other words, there's so much we're overwhelmed, there's too much pain and too much discouragement and, and what's happening around the world causes you to feel this overwhelmness and, and overwhelmed with fear and overwhelmed with uncertainty and overwhelmed with challenges and overwhelmed with your children and overwhelmed with you, overwhelmed with your health, overwhelmed with the stuff that's not working out. And so we find ourselves in a tremendous season of overwhelmness uh, that you cannot even enjoy one moment of joy joy because the minute you sit down to to have a peaceful moment overwhelmness come upon you and you are worried about tomorrow and worried about your children and worry about your grandchildren worry about your great grandchildren and worry about your job and worry about your pension and worry about your money that's gone funny and and we are in a time of where people are overwhelmed but in the woods of being overwhelmed we have to understand that the power of God in us And, and the disciples were like that in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The disciples were bewildered 
because now Jesus comes to them and appears to them after the resurrection. Uh, Forty days after the, the resurrection, Jesus appears to them. And when Jesus appears to them 40 days after the resurrection, he tells him now, you need to go wait in Jerusalem because I'm about to, I'm about to, uh, to arise, to ascend to my father. That's called Ascension Day. And Jesus now comes to, and the disciples are bewildered. As a matter of fact, they were so, be, were so bewildered during that time because that John chapter 20 verse 20 says they locked themselves in a room because they were afraid of the Jews. And so many people right now, you, feel you, you find yourself overwhelmed and you're afraid to go out. You're afraid to make decisions. You're afraid to move forward because you are overwhelmed with fear and with uncertainty of what's happening in the country and what's happening in the world. And that brings the church of God into a place of fear that you feel so locked up in your mind that you cannot believe outside of your current reality that you find yourself in the situation where you don't know whether you're coming or going going, whether you're Martha or whether you're Arthur, you don't know which way you're going, and the spirit of overwhelmness just bring you to a place. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And, and really, anybody know what I'm talking about? That, that you find yourself in a place that, that the, you, you can't even have joy anymore. The disciples were there, by the way. They were overwhelmed. And, and Jesus says, go wait in Jerusalem. And the Bible says uh, they went to wait in Jerusalem in the upper room. And 10 days after, 10 days after the ascension, uh, uh, the Bible says, actually, chapter 2, verse 1, and the Spirit of the Lord, and they, were, and they were all gathered in one place together, and suddenly there came a sound like a mighty, you, 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 know, the, you, know, the, you know the word, right? And so understand the power of overwhelmness can only be met by the Spirit of God. That when, when, but the Bible says and that while they were in the upper room, when the Spirit of God came upon them, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, He removed that overwhelmness of fear that Peter, who used to lock himself up in John chapter 20, is now standing with boldness in Acts chapter 3. And Peter says, this is that. Are you with me? So they move from a time of overwhelmness. The Holy Spirit get poured out upon them and the Holy Spirit produce a boldness in them. I want to say to you, we are in a time of, of boldness because the power of God, the Holy Spirit lives within us, resonate within us and the boldness of Christ come upon them. And I want to declare to you today that we are in the most exciting times in our lives uh, that God says, I'm about to do something that's so great that will blow you your mind that God says I'm about to bring restoration like you've never ever seen it before the power of Pentecost is to bring restoration not only is it the birthing of the church not only is it the baptism in the Holy Spirit but it's also the power of God to bring restoration are you with me family and so I've stopped by this house today to let you know you have to anticipate greater things because this is what's going to happen. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3 verse 21. And um, uh, I'm going to ask my wife to read it. And if she could uh, get a mic for, to, for her, uh, she will read it for me. Acts chapter 3 verse 21. Acts 3 verse 21. Uh, the Bible says, while well, she will get it up. I'll paraphrase and she will read the, the correct thing. Uh, the Bible really says that before Jesus can return, there's got to be a restoration of all things. Amen. Amen. Restoration of all things. All things. Acts 3.21. Whom heaven must keep until the time of the complete restoration of all things about which God promised through the mouth of the holy pro prophets from ancient times. Praise God. Amen. Thank you so much. The Bible says that before heavens can receive him, there has to be restoration of all things. Say with me, all things. Ask your neighbor, what part of all don't you understand? All means all. All means all. He says there has to be restoration of 
all things. It means your health will be restored. It means your ministry will be restored. It means your children will be restored. It means your family will be restored. It means everything that is connected with you will be restored. We are in a time of total restoration where God says, I am bringing you into the season where you need to anticipate what I'm about to do. And what I'm about to do is to restore. That other word restore also means payback. Say it to your neighbors, payback. <laughs> oh, I want to say to you today that God will restore it all. Say with me, restore it all. Restore it all. I don't know what your current reality is, but God says I'm about to restore everything. I don't know where you find yourself uh, and what you've lost out in life, but God says, look ahead with foresight, for restoration is your portion. You might have lost your job. You might have lost your dream. You might have lost your family. You might have lost your help. You might have lost your home, but God says, I am about to re." This message is not for everyone. But this message is for those who believe in the power of the word of God. This is not for everyone. This is for those who believe that God has got his prophetic agenda for your life. This message is for those who believe in the power of the promise of God. That you might be in a bad shape right now. But restoration is your portion. You might be in a difficult place right now. But deliverance is your portion. You might be in a hopeless place right now. But hope is your portion. I've stopped by to let someone to know today that this is not a time to give up. It's not a time to throw in a towel. It's not a time to be depressed and a time to be despondent. It's a time to believe in the restoration of the power of God that God will restore all things. Body of Christ, God will restore all. That's right, that's right, that's right. He will restore all. Therefore, it is not how things look, but it's how we look at things. More often than not, we get so caught up by how things look, and we get moved by how things look. I'm not moved by how things look. I'm moved by how I look at things. I look at things through the lenses of God's word. And the lenses of God's word says, I have a future that is brighter. I have a tomorrow that is greater. I have a future. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it in your lifetime. Your children will come right. Your children will get off drugs. Your children will be restored. Your marriage will be restored. They will come home. Your sons and your daughters, they will come home. Because God says, I will restore it. not how things look, it's how you look at things. And so we do look at things through the lenses of God's word. We look at things through the lessons of God's servants. And we look at things through the language of faith. I wrote a song. I wrote a song for the body of Christ. I wrote a song for the body of Christ. Now, now, but you're part of the body of Christ, right? I'm talking about the greater body of Christ, but but also for the body of Christ. It says restoring all. The song says, this words, it says, I've lost so much, endured all pain, thought I would never recover again, but this I know that kept me strong, that God will restore it all. The chorus says restore it all, restore it all, No matter how broken, God will restore it all. And I wrote the song as we came out of COVID. And people were overwhelmed with sorrow, overwhelmed with loss, overwhelmed with pain. And I said, Lord, 
give me a sound. Give me a sound of restoration. Give me a sound to the body of Christ to let them know it's not all lost. It's hope is not all God, but God will restore it all. Praise God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Restoration is here. Restoration is for you. Restoration is for me. The spirit of restoration. No matter how broken we may be. Because we all have to deal with brokenness. We all have to deal with disappointment. Because divine redemption does not mean trouble-free exemption. But when we go to whatever we go to, we go to it with the understanding that God will restore it all. That is a promise for you. It's a promise for the last days. It's a promise for us. It's a promise for this church. It's a promise for your house. It's a promise for your children. It's a promise for your grandchildren. It's a promise for your great grandchildren children. It's a promise for this nation uh, that God will restore it all. Doesn't matter where you find yourself, how hard and how difficult it might be, but God will restore it all. I want to take your right hand, put it on the person's left shoulder, and just thank God. Just pray a prayer of restoration. Say, thank God for what you're about to do in her life. Thank God that the shoulder on which your hand is resting. Thank God. That's right. That Begin to thank God. Thank God for the restoration. Thank Thank God for what you're about to enter into. Thank God for what you're about to walk into. Thank God for what you're about to experience. Thank God for your next dimension of restoration. Thank God that shoulder where your hand is resting upon. Begin to thank God. Begin to thank God for what he has established, what he has done, what he has declared, what he has decreed. That's right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Begin to thank God. Thank God for your house. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your job. Thank God for your money. Thank God for everything. Say, God, I thank you. I I receive restoration. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The devil thought he had me down. But God has lifted me up. I thought it was all over and all lost. But there's a new dimension of grace. I thought I lost it all. But God, I thank you today. That you have promised. That you will restore it all. Over my life. Now come and give the Lord a hand of praise and take your seats for a moment. Praise God. Go ahead, take your seats. There are two dimensions of all of us. There are two dimensions of all of us. Of your life, there is your right now dimension. Say with me, right now. But then there's also the not yet dimension. And so we are all in our right now. We're getting ready for our not yet. But God lives in the already done. Say with me, I'm in my right now. Getting ready for my not yet. But God lives in the already done. Say one more time, I'm in my right now. Getting ready for my not yet. God lives in the already done. We must be careful that we don't get caught up in our right now and think that our right now is our conclusion. You must be very careful that we give. don't find yourself in your current reality and forget in your current reality there's a future possibility that is bigger than your current reality. Because more often than not, we get so caught up by where we are and caught up by what we're going through that we don't see a better day, we don't see a new day, we don't see a new tomorrow. When God looks at you, God does not look at you based on your right now. God does not even look at you based on your not yet. God looks at you what's already done. That's why Jesus can be seated on the throne and Jesus is seated because he's already done everything. The breakthrough that you are praying for is already done. The miracles that you are trusting for is already done. The promotion that you're trusting God for is already done. Your children being restored is already done. And when God looks at you, God looks at you at your right now. And God can smile at your right now because he knows that you are not about to stay in your right now. You're not about to hang in your right now. You might be there, but you're not going to stay there forever. Naomi, 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 Naomi was 
in Moab. Naomi was in a bad place, but the Bible says Naomi arose. Naomi arose out of a place. And God says you might be in your now place, but you're not about to stay in your now place. You might be in about your now disappointment, but you're not about to stay in your now disappointment. You might be in your now failure, but you're not about to stay in your now failure. You are in your right now dilemma, but you're not about to stay there. You are in your right now discouragement, but you are not allowed to stay there. You are in your right now, but God says, don't you know that your right now will not last forever because weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Don't you know that your pain is not going to last? Your difficulty is not going to last? Your challenges is not going to last? I need somebody to say my right now. Say I'm getting ready for my not yet. Say my not yet is already done. And so we are pulled in between the two. That we sometimes camp in our right now. We are camping in places that we are supposed to move through. We are staying in discouragement too long. And the longer you stay in your discouragement, the more you delay or not yet. I'll say it again. The longer you stay in your discouragement, you delay your not yet deliverance. The longer you stay set up or the longer you stay being upset, the more do you delay your set up. That God cannot set you up as long as you upset. Say neighbor, God cannot set you up if you stay upset. Stop being upset. You're upset about yourself. You're upset about where you are. You're upset about your children. You're upset about being married to the wrong man. You're upset about everything. You're upset about your job. And the longer you're upset about your stuff, you cannot be set up. And God says, you've got to understand. The power of your right now cannot contain the possibilities of your not yet. You are bigger than your right now. You are too great for your right now. Because what is coming is much greater. What is coming is much bigger. What is coming is much mightier. That's why you have to be careful of how you handle your right nows. Because your right now is a test. Say with me, a test. That is supposed to transform me to my not yet. And sometimes we hang around the test. And we make a test, a permanent test. And we make a permanent decision about a temporary problem. Your right now represents your reality. Your not yet represents your ideal. And all of us are pulled between our right now reality versus our ideal. Everyone in this room right now, you have an ideal. The ideal is your dream. The ideal is where you want to be. The ideal is what you're trusting God for. The ideal is to see yourself not at the same place where you are today. And so you are looking at your ideal. But it's how you deal with your reality that determines how quick you will get to your ideal. And sometimes we camp in our reality. I'm not saying we must ignore our reality. You have to deal with your reality. And you have to realize the power of God in your reality. Because there are three important things coming together. And I call it the convergence. The convergence in this season, Dr. Ripley, uh, the Lord told me, tell the saints there are three important things that will push them out of their right now to their not yet. Number one is sight. Say with me, sight. sight. Say sight. sight. Sight is important. That while you in your right now discouragement, you have sight of the word of God. 
You have sight to know that when you cast your cares and your burdens upon him, he will care for you. And God is saying, my church needs sight. They need to see what I am doing, what I continue to do, and where I'm about to take them to. I need them to see, not that they are about to stay in the same place, but I need them to see that I am a God that will take them from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from power to power. I need them to have sight to know that everything that I create, move forward. Time, move forward. Birds, fly forward. Fish, swim forward. Rivers, move forward forward and that's why you've got to understand that when you look through the lenses of God's word then the lenses of God's word says that I am about to take you forward (laughs) say to your neighbor anticipate greater things come on say anticipate greater things come on say anticipate it anticipate it say when you wake up in the morning say greater things are here today Today is a great day to see the glory of God, to see the provision of God, to see the wonders of God. Anticipate greater things. Sight. The second thing that's coming together is sound. Sound. Sound is internal, but signs are external. That Elijah can, uh, in the uh, book of uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, he says, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. He is in his right now. Let me describe Elijah's right now. His right now is an extended drought. His right now is no food. His right now, there has not been rain for three years. His right now is a drought. But while he is in his right now famine, he hears something else in his right now famine. He is in the abundance of lack, Dr. April. But in the abundance of lack, he hears abundance of rain. I'll say it again. He is in his right now. He is experiencing Famine. He has tremendous lack. What he needs to sustain him is not there. But while he is in it, it's not in him. I'll say it again. While he is in it, it's not in him. That he does not hear what he sees. He sees the abundance of lack, but he hears the abundance of rain. God will not take you out of it until you can see it and until you can hear it. God will not take you out of it until you can see it and until you can hear it. He understands that sound is internal and sound is external or sign is external and sound internal. For him to see the right external sign, he had to align his internal sound. I'll say it again. I'll say it again, Dr. Marginita. Oh, Lord have mercy. This is so good and blessed me when the Lord gave it to me. He he wants to see the external sign. But he recognized in order to see the right sign, I must have the right sound. I want to see the sign of liberation, but I've got a sound of frustration. I want to see the sound of elevation, but I've got the sound of depression. I want to see the sound of improvement, but I've got the sound of negativity. As long as you've got the wrong sound, you will never see the right sign. I don't know what sounds have you been made lately. I don't know what are you saying to yourself. 
how bad it is in America and how expensive it is to live in America and how challenged it is in America and how my life will never change and you're making all the wrong sounds. But you come to church and you praise God expecting to see the right side. God is saying, get your sound right. If you get your sound right, you get your sign right. If you get your sound right, you get your sign right. If you say the right things, if you are positive, if you have faith, if you encourage yourself in the Lord, you have to make the right sound. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Say, neighbor, stop complaining. Say, stop moaning. Stop groaning. Because you are delaying your next. And God says your next is bigger than your now. And so the more you are in your right now, in the abundance of lack, Elijah says, I hear something different. <laughs> I see it, but I'm hearing something different. I don't see... Oh, I don't hear what I see. I see abundance of lack. But I hear abundance of rain while I'm in the abundance of lack. And the more he begin to hear the right sound, he begin to move towards his not yet. When you make the right sound in your right now, God takes you to your not yet. Uh, while, while my wife gets the message Bible quickly, John 6, 21. There has to be a different sound. You cannot sound like the world. We have the sound of faith. Today is Pentecost Sunday. We have the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit that says uh, that I can do all things through Christ uh, that strengthens me. The power of the Holy Spirit that says uh, what nothing is impossible with God. The power of the Holy Spirit that says that with God I can do all things. Say neighbor make the right sound. God will elevate you. God will praise you. God will bless you. That when you start praising God, the blessing come down. Amen. You're in your right now. It's difficult. But thank God. I am grateful this morning. I'm still alive. Bad shape. But still alive. Yeah. Going to hell, but still alive. Yeah. Feeling sick, but still alive. Yeah. Going to challenges, but still alive. Yeah. And the more you talk about the goodness of God, yeah. the more God begins to validate you for what is already done. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Give these brothers a wonderful hand. Yeah. Are you in my right hand? <laughs> What's your name, sir? Tofer. 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 You are, you, you, you are in your right now, but because you responded to the right sound of faith, yeah. trusting God, believing His word, declaring the word of God, yeah. God took you to your not yet. Yeah. In other words, He took your dimension that you've never been exposed to. When you get to this level of your life, this becomes your new right now. Yeah. <laughs> He's old right now. Was a difficult place. A challenging place. He now gets to a new right now, which is an elevated place. Which means his not yet becomes his right now.
But while he is in his new right now, his new not yet is waiting. His new not yet is waiting. He is in his new right now. God says your not yet is already done. And God begin to accelerate him with the right sound. And God takes him right there. The Bible says eyes have not seen and ears have not heard but it's not come up in your heart the things that God has in store for you. I want to say to you body of Christ, Dr. Ripley, get ready. Get ready for your not yet because there's a greater not yet that's so waiting and that not yet is going to blow your mind. John chapter 6 verse 21 tells us now, because more often than not, we are in our right now. And you are saying, look at where I am. My age is against me. My education is against me. My health is against me. And you can think of everything that is against you from stopping you to what God has ordained for you. In the meantime, God says, this is not about you. It's about I getting the glory by giving you the breakthrough. Are you with me, family? And God says now, while you are trying to figure it out, He has a long time to work it out. You are saying, time is against me. Uh, my, my, everything is against me. I'm sure not here, but in, in South Africa. <laughs> not here. Not here. <laughs> this is what happened. John chapter 6, verse 21 in the Message Bible. In the evening, his disciples went down to the sea, got in the boat, and headed back across the water to Capernaum. It had grown quite dark, and Jesus had not yet returned. A huge wind blew up, churning the sea. They were maybe three or four miles out when they saw Jesus walking on the sea quite near the boat. They were scared, senseless. But he reassured them, it's me. It's all right. Don't be afraid. So they took him on board. In no time, they reached land, the exact spot they were headed to. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, 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 they were in a storm <laughs> in there right now. And the Bible says they were about four miles into the ocean. And that journey was a 13-mile journey, which means they had how many miles to go? Still? It's a 13-mile journey, and they were four miles in. It's a 13-mile journey, and they've already done four miles, nine miles to go. While they had nine miles to go, the Bible says, read quickly, Jesus, they took him. They received the prophetic word. They received the word. Say, neighbor, you've got to take this word on board today. Take it for your life today. Stop saying this word is for someone else. It's for you. And the Bible says when they took the word on board, what happened? No, no, no. Before that and in how many time? How much time? In how much time? Come on, in how much time? Ask your neighbor what part of no time don't you understand? In no time, no time, no time. No time means this. No time means that God does not live in time. Time lives in God. That God was there before time began. That time did not begin before God began. God began time. And so God is not moved or limited by time. And stop limiting God in your life by putting all the excuses of why you cannot be blessed and why you cannot achieve and why you cannot build that business and why you cannot be elevated and why you cannot be promoted and you're using your ages against you and all the other stuff that's against you. And God says, don't you know that when I'm getting ready to put my word inside of you, I will do it in no time that that which was supposed to take a long time will come in no time. Come on, no time. 
time. No time. Come on, he will do it in no time. No Your elevation in no time. No Your promotion in no time. No Your business wrong, no time. No God will do it in no time because of the power of the Holy Spirit. I was, um, last year October, last year October, I, uh, we were invited to a golf retreat. And when we were, were invited to the golf retreat uh, by a friend of ours, uh, also a golfer. He lives two hours away, two hour flight out of our country, or in our country, two hour flights. And on my son, Lamont, took me to the airport. And Lamont says to me, Daddy, you've done so much. Is there anything that you would still like? I said to him, you know, son, one day I'd like to buy a boat. But my one day is not this word that I'm preaching right now. My one day is far in the distant future. And that was on, say with me, Wednesday at 10, 10, 10, 10 a.m. Wednesday. Thursday morning at 10 a.m., I sit in the lounge of this person who invited me. He says to me, Topher, he says, Apostle, I could not sleep. I says, Naden, what do you mean? He says, all night I'm hearing boat, Apostle Oscar. Boat, Apostle Oscar. Boat, Apostle Oscar. He says, I could, he says he could not sleep. And while he's saying, hearing the word boat, Apostle Oscar, he was rebuking the devil. Because he thought that was a different voice. He said, Apostle, I could not sleep. And the Lord told me to sow a boat into your life. Listen, my brothers and sisters, at 10 a.m. on the Wednesday, at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday, I say, man, I would love to have a boat. And at 10 a.m. the following day, I have, I have a boat. And God did it in no time. And what I'm trying to say to you today, that there's a dimension of greatness that God has in store for you, that you are in your right now, but you're getting ready for your not yet, because your not yet is already done. So don't doubt God. Trust in God. If he says there's going to be a restoration of all things, you take the word and say, God, I know that I'm in this, but I'm not about to stay here. There are greater things that I'm anticipating. There's greater things to come. Can you give them a wonderful... And, 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 and so what happened now? And so you get ready for your new, not yet. Because you are in your, your, your right now, which is a great right now. It's a great right now. But you're getting ready for a new, greater. Amen? Amen. And so, and so if, if I, can I just have a conversation with them quickly? And so if I have to describe what your greater looks like, then I would say W-O-W. -W. W O W. Guess, guess when that guy said, I'm going to bless you with a boat, guess what did I say to him? Wow. What did I say to him? Wow. Tell them what did I say to him? Wow. 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 <laughs> Dr. Ripley, Dr. Marginita, God is about to wow you. He's about to wow the church. He's about to wow you and bring you in that dimension of favor and blessing and increase and supernatural miracles because the wow of God is upon your life. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 says, And his anger lasts for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. The church is in a lifetime of favor. And God says, I'm bringing my wow into your now. I'm bringing my wow into your now. That there is a next dimension of greatness that you're about to step into, declares the Lord. While every head bow, every eye closed. Thank you. I want to pray for you this morning. I'm going to pray two prayers. The first prayer is for those who are in the house today. 
and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, and maybe you are watching via live stream, and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, God is calling on you today and say, you are precious. He loves you more than what you can ever imagine. And God is calling on you today. If you are that person, let's say, Apostle, I want to give my life to Jesus right now. Raise your hand quickly because we want to lead you to the Lord. The most important thing is the soul in the kingdom. And God loves you. He loves you enough not to let you go your own way. But He loves you. Is there anybody here today? Thank you for that hand. Thank you. Is there another hand this morning that says, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ? Just raise your hand very high. If you, if you raise your hand, raise your hand. Thank you so much. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father today I thank you for the privilege to be found in your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this opportunity that I have to step out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. I give my life to you today. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. And I receive you right now as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Everybody pray this prayer after me. Say, Father, thank you for the written word that has become the spoken word. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, that this will be activated in my life to become the living word. Thank you for your manifest presence today, Lord. I receive your word with gladness today. And I thank you today for who you are in my life. I honor you and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.